Uh, hey guys, I'm just going to give you a quick overview on changing the radiator on a 2013 Subaru Outback. Now this one has the 2.5 liter engine and uh, some things to note, uh, basically getting started, there are a bunch of push clips that hold plastic panels in here that need to be removed. Um, once you get all that out, the plastic insert piece will come out. Then there are two brackets that hold the radiator in place. Um, those come out 12 mil bolts, bunch of uh, clamps, your upper rad hose. It's going to uh, come off and yeah, lower rad hose clamp. It might, you might be best to get that from underneath unless you have one of those uh, tools that uses the cable. But um, this one was really, really rusty. So I ran into a lot of issues with seized bolts. Like pretty much every bolt was seized. The two top ones for the brackets, they were seized. I had to put heat into them to get them out. Otherwise they would have snapped. The uh, two hose, hoses that run for your transmission cooler, just the little hoses that go into the bottom. The clamps were super rusty. And as soon as you go to uh, use pliers to squish them, they're just like these clamps. Uh, the ears break off of them. So then you have to cut them off with like a cut off disc or something and you gotta be really careful not to cut the hose. So that's all good, we got that all done. Um, now this thing overheated, so I did change the thermostat on it as well because if you overheat, usually the, uh, the wax that's sealed inside the thermostat will expand so much that it leaks out and then the thermostat's no good, it usually gets stuck open. So in order to change that, it's actually located just at the end of this rad hose that runs down here to a housing. But to get that off, you have to remove the exhaust manifold, which kind of sucks. So, um, and then in order to do that, you've got some exhaust bolts. There's one flange on the pipe that goes to the back. So there's three bolts there or three nuts. Uh, they were probably the worst for rust. And then on either side, there's a flange on either side and you have three nuts on each side, 14 millimeter for all of the exhaust bolts. They were super rusty as well. I heated every single one of them and luckily they all came off without breaking the studs, but without that heat, I don't think I would have got them off. Um, also keep in mind, if you're gonna take that manifold off, you've gotta take these oxygen sensors. You have to unplug them. Both connectors are right here. So it was actually fairly simple to get to. There is a big shield that's underneath. So if you wanted to access underneath, um, this is the shield that needs to come off. You've got a bunch of push pins and two bolts. They're uh, just 12 millimeter bolts. Once again, very rusty. Uh, luckily I was able to get a little bit of heat into them and take them out, even though they're surrounded by plastic. Um, an induction heater would be the best tool for heat, but it's expensive. And I know a lot of you guys watching this probably don't have one of those. so. Um, that's, uh, kind of the gist of things. The rad actually just drops down. Once you take these two supports off, it just pulls right up. There's two locating dowels on the bottom of the rad that sit in these rubber grommets. So there's no hardware or anything on the bottom that you need to worry about. Um, the rad fans themselves, this was the, uh, the other issue that I ran into was there's little square nuts that are part of the radiator sit at the very top right here so there's four of them in total and that's what the rad fan bolts to and they get really really rusty and you go to take their 10 millimeter bolts you go to take them off and it breaks the plastic and then the nut just sits in there and spins so seeing as you're replacing the rad what i recommend is to just take some side cutters and just cut those plastic ears off that have the nut in them and then once you get your rad fans out, you'll be able to loosen them a little bit, um, hopefully. And you can see that the fans themselves are slotted. So once you loosen them just a little bit, you're able to take the piece out. And then you can hold one side with like vice grips while you undo the other side. It's fairly straightforward. Um, like I say, heat is your best friend. So once you get those uh, all taken apart, then you'll be able to uh, assemble everything easier seeing as you get new hardware on the rod. Um, these are your transmission cooler line fittings and the hoses go under here. So what I did was, like I was saying, the uh, tension clamps break because they're really rusty. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but if they do, 
then just you're gonna get new ones with your rad anyways. I just took side cutters and cut the actual uh, fitting portion off and then dealt with it once I got the rad out of the car. Much, much easier rather than trying to uh, do it while the rad's in the car. And uh, also there is some foam depending on which rad you get. This one's a cheaper one from Auto Shack. Uh, I believe it's like $79 Canadian. Um, and with taxes and five dollar shipping it was like 106 bucks or something um, that also came with the uh, lifetime warranty but this foam usually doesn't come with your rads so I'm just gonna glue it back on and all it does is it keeps a seal between the air conditioning condenser which sits right in front of it, it looks like a rad and it just keeps a seal between there so that dirt and debris and all that stuff doesn't fall down in there and it also helps airflow get pushed through the rad itself rather than going and going up. So I'm just gonna uh, hot glue that back on to the new rad, got everything cleaned up. And the uh, coolant that I'm gonna be using is this stuff. It's aftermarket coolant, but it's by uh, Z-Rex and, or well, by Valvoline, but uh, it's for Subaru, it's their blue coolant. So uh, I think that's pretty much vacuum filling the system or we're sucking it down right now vacuums all the air out of the system and then once i get to about 25 or pretty close to it i'll stop now we have a complete vacuum on the system you can see these hoses are squished right down you pull all the air out and now when i hit the switch it's gonna pull coolant back into the system Watch the hoses expand. It's a good way to check for leaks as well. If it doesn't hold a vacuum, then we know we've got a leak somewhere, but usually you can tell right away. I'll have a hard time pulling a vacuum. It's a good tool if you do cooling systems a lot. Yeah, so we basically just uh, start by dropping the fan, or the uh, sorry, the radiator down into those locating dowels I was talking about in the bottom that have the rubber grommets. Once they're in, then you can go ahead and pull the radiator back, install our brackets on top. Two 12 millimeter bolts go in and secure those. Uh, we put our lower rad hose on, put our upper rad hose on, um, to secure them. Um, sorry, leave the rad leave this to last. Put our uh, rad fans on. There's also locating dowels uh, on the bottom of the fans that go into some holes on the bottom of the rad. And then uh, we can plug those in and then secure them with four 10 millimeter bolts. Um, the transmission cooler lines, there is a, a spot on the bottom of the rad that is like down here. And uh, that's just to like hold the one of the lines and then there's another spot that's got some ears for the other two uh, transmission cooler lines just to secure them in place so that they're not hanging out um, those get popped in yeah plug our rad fans in throw this thing on secure that this uh, overflow reservoir it's fairly simple to remove and install there's just like a pressure tab right here so if we just like push it um, and it just pops off and then this thing slides out and it comes up so pretty simple uh, this hose it drops in the long end goes down in and then it curves over and connects to the top of our rad that's pretty much it just vacuum filled it going to uh, put a funnel on the top of this fill it up the rest of the way we can see there's already some coolant in there there's just a little bit of air so there shouldn't really be much of more air in there so once that's topped up, I'm going to run it, make sure everything works. We got up to operating temp real good, no leaks. Then I'll fill this uh, overflow reservoir. I'll fill it up to the maximum. That's pretty much it. Uh, this is the air intake duct. That's uh, the piece de resistance. 
two uh, plastic push pins go in there, which we're missing. So I will get some from my toolbox. Just like that. questions throw them in the comments below i'd be glad to answer anything you got give the video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe for more content we'll see you in the next one